and here's some more, 2y minus 7y. Well, 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So 2y minus 7y is negative 5y. And the next one, 3a minus 9a plus 2a. Well, again, we have to subtract first, and then we'll add the 2. So 3a minus 9a, that gives me a negative 6a, and then plus the 2, negative 6 plus 2 is a negative 4. So 3a minus 9a plus 2a gives me a negative 4a. Now in this one, these are all x squared terms. So I have 3x squared plus 6x squared. That gives me 9x squared there plus 7x squared. That gives me a 16x squared for those first three terms. Then I have a plus 4x squared. So that gives me a total of 20x squared right there. And then plus 2 and plus 8, you can probably see that the 8 and the 2 add up to 10. So that gives me a total of 30x squared. These are all x squared terms, so they can all be combined into a single term. Now this one, 12b minus 12b, that ends up being 0. I have one thing minus that same thing, 12b minus 12b. If you wanted to, you could think of this as 12b minus 12b is 0b, but this 0b, 0 times b, is just the same as 0, so we typically don't write the b on there, or the variable. If, if the coefficient is 0, then that term is just non-existent. It's a 0. Here, 3xy plus 4xy, that gives me 7xy minus 7xy. So again, I end up with 0. 7xy minus 7xy leaves me with 0. Here I have 5x squared y cubed z to the fifth plus 3x squared y cubed z to the fifth. And we look carefully and we see that the variable part here is exactly the same in both of them. I have an x squared in each one a y cubed in each one, and a z to the fifth. And those are exactly the same, so they can be combined. I have 5 of these plus 3 of these. That gives me a total of 8 of these, 8x squared y cubed z to the fifth.